Pat Mooney. Uh, I work with the Eccentric Group, which is an international civil society organization based in Canada, but we work globally on the development issues related to technologies. And uh, I was a recipient of the Right Livelihood Award in 1985. And what is the central aim of your work? Most of our work is, is uh, looking at the impact of new technologies and how they affect uh, uh, marginalized peoples, uh, mainly in, in the Global South. Uh, our work began uh, focusing on seeds, on the importance of plant genetic resources for food sovereignty and security. Uh, but it's expanded over the decades to, to uh, uh, in the, from the 1970s work onward to dealing with uh, all kinds of technologies now, like nanotechnology, synthetic biology, geoengineering, any major new technological trends which may adversely or positively impact uh, marginalized peoples again. When did you receive the Right Livelihood Award and what has it meant to you and to your work? Well, I, I was thrilled to receive the Right Livelihood Award in 1985 with my colleague Carrie Fowler. And uh, for us it was a huge benefit because until then, frankly, our campaigning for seeds, uh, for the conservation of, of crop diversity, and against multinational companies that, that were trying to, to monopolize seeds through the patent system had been very unpopular. We, we had no support from governments, no support from uh, uh, either foundations or others that could, could, could back us in our work. Uh, when the Right Livelihood Award arrived, suddenly everyone stopped and paid attention and, and took us more seriously. So it was a big plus for us to be able to, to have the award and, you, and have the, the credibility of the award to, to, to get more attention to our issues and more support. What is your vision of a good world? I'd like to see the global commons expanded. I think we need to go back to the, the notion of a commons. And, that, and not a commons not where everything is free and everyone can grab, but a commons in which we all recognize that we live on the planet together, that, that uh, uh, we have to treat each other justly, of course, in that commons, and that we have a common responsibility for, for the safety of the planet and the, the diversity of the planet uh, as, a, as, a, as a, a joint task. I think we've, we've sort of forgotten this sense of the commons and we see the commons being torn apart all around us, pieces of it captured, uh, uh, whether it's the patenting of plants or the monopolization of the stratosphere with geoengineering or the control of biomass through synthetic biology. These are efforts to monopolize the commons and, and we need to turn that around. And what are your expectations of the cooperation between the right livelihood? Award at college and the Center for Development Research and its students, which has just started? Well, this may come as a shock to you, but uh, uh, I'm getting older. And, and uh, as I get older, the more I think about uh, the need to cooperate with other generations. So, so it's, it's, uh, to me, it's critical to work with uh, uh, younger, younger people, uh, not always youth necessarily, but certainly younger, who uh, are concerned about similar issues and to share our knowledge. It's not an issue or a question of, of passing the torch. Uh, uh, I've got my torch and that's my responsibility. They'll have their torch and that'll be their responsibility. But at least we can share information and ideas and, and see if there's ways in which uh, 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 there's collaboration that's possible. And, and I think the, the idea of Right Livelihood Colleges is, is a great way to uh, to move across the generations and to share that, to exchange that information. But I want to stress it's got to be a mutual exchange, it's not one-sided. I think for the most part, when, when uh, uh, we talk about older, an older generation talking to a younger generation, and we use words like experience and so on, it's always telling a younger generation what they can't do, and I don't think they should believe this. Okay, Mr. Mooney, thank you for this interview. Thank you.